doing? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Internet's Most Hated Mafia-themed geek podcast, the Long Cult Mafia podcast, is I, once again, the Reverend Godfather of the show's main host and frontman. If it sounds like I'm coming down with a cold, good chance I am. And if you're listening to this prior to December 31st, 2019, I hope you have, will have a safe and wonderful New Year's Eve celebration. And if you so happen to partake in a lot of adult beverages, may you take a cab home and get home, not just a cab, an Uber or a Lyft home, and that way you're able to get home safely. If you need any type of, uh, if you're feeling down and out, please seek help. We urge you to seek help. We understand and we know, kind of know how it is this time of year in regards to mental health. So if that be the case, if you need help, seek help. You're not alone. You have uh, friends or you have support, at least support this time of year if needed. Seek that help. Seek that support if needed. So, uh, but if you're listening to this after the new year, after December 31st, if you're listening to this in 2020, we hope you had a safe and wonderful New Year celebration, and Happy New Year to all of you. And we hope you had a wonderful holiday season. And if you want to tell us all about the fun and weird stuff that happened to you during this wonderful holiday season, if it was a wonderful holiday season for you, feel free to do so by sending us an email at longcoatmafia at gmail.com and let us know. Or leave a description down below and there's a good chance we'll leave or read it on the air. We do have that policy in place to do that. So, to get to the point, in this week's episode, it was kind of a shot to the arm that I needed because I was feeling down and out. I was feeling the holiday blues myself. I was feeling kind of burnt out with the show. And you kind of hear with the interview at the start that there was a shout-out by Dave himself, David Kerr, uh, regards to uh, promoting bloody summer camp and to do interviews so that doing the interview was kind of a shot to the arm it was much needed shot to the arm i feel better i feel energized for the show so let's get it on let's give a brief little prior introduction uh so a side note special thanks special shout out to matt burns in regards to uh letting us know and letting us kind of highlight this this shout out or i should say this uh request that uh David Kerr kind of put out there is that uh, he wanted to speak to podcasters like ourselves to talk about uh, Bloody Summer Camp. So in this kind of uh, interview that was done with not just Dave Kerr, but his wife Amber and uh, a kind of a, one of the co-producers and actress in the film, Michael, uh, came on Skype to kind of speak about uh, not just Bloody Summer Camp, and everything surrounding it, but the other movies they did, acting, horror movies, general movies that they liked, and so forth and so on. We hope you enjoy this movie. Again, special thank you to uh, David Kerr, uh, his wife, Amber, and Michael for being on the show uh, for this interview. Uh, links to their stuff will be in the description uh, and everything else. Let's see, uh, what else am I forgetting? Again, special shout out to Matt Burns for kind of highlighting David's post because I think I was friends with David prior to the interview. But, you know, I might have not seen it because of the stupid way Facebook does posts now. But either way, thank you, Matt, to kind of highlight that post and draw my attention to it. Uh, Thank you, David, Amber, and Michael for being on the show. Let's get right down to it. Here is that interview. I hope you all enjoy it. Okay, folks, uh, we're back, and we're going to kind of get things rolling with a round of introductions because um, to kind of explain things, Dave put out a call for podcasts for promotion, I guess, for his new movie that will be released sometime in the near couple of months or or so. Uh, And when speaking with Dave, Dave pretty much said that there will be other guests on the show, not just him. So I believe a round of introductions is in order. So 
all of us could be kind of acquainted in some way. So uh, my listeners know who I am, but uh, please introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is uh, Dave Kerr. I'm actually the uh, owner of Slasher 15 Productions. I'm the writer and director for uh, the movies that I make. And this is Amber. Um I'm Amber. I'm his wife. Um, I'm a producer for the new movie that we have coming out called Bloody Summer Camp. I'm also a special effects makeup artist. Hi, I'm Michael. I am an actor for a Bloody Summer Camp, and I'm also a producer for, for Bloody Summer Camp as well. <laughs> okay, uh, let's pretty much start with that for right now. Uh, can, um, would you all please describe Bloody Summer Camp for the audience at large in regards to this upcoming movie? Sure. Yeah, Bloody Summer Camp is a throwback movie. It's a '80s uh, summer camp slasher, in kind of inspired by Sleepaway Camp, uh, The Burning, uh, the original Friday the Thirteenth. It takes place at a summer camp in 1986, uh, where a bunch of counselors are getting the camp ready for uh, the upcoming summer when a masked killer that has been dubbed Devil Face shows up and begins hacking off, hacking up the uh, counselors one by one. Now, uh, this is a crowd, in essence for right now, a crowd-funded movie in a way. Um, can you yeah. tell us, uh, how has crowdfunding helped uh, independent creators like yourself in regards to movies? Well, actually, I mean, people, I'm not sure about everyone, but obviously people like me especially I know, speaking for myself, uh, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for crowdfunding because uh, basically, you know, when we have an idea, uh, it, it's, it, you know, we need someone to, to back it, someone to believe in it. And uh, as far as all of our films, we, we rely solely on crowdfunding for, uh, for these kinds of movies. So, um, because we're, we at the show are kind of scattered brained, this is going to be back and forth. So please, uh, I know it's going to be a little weird for you guys with the, the scattered brain in regards to our show. Um, what is the lore of being an independent filmmaker in regards to, um, this is what your third movie that you're currently working third movie. Yes. Third movie. Third, third movie. What is the, uh, so far, what is the lore have you, you all filled, uh, feel in regards to independent movies that are out there, like yourselves. Uh, as far as what, as far as us, or as far as uh, the contributors. Um, you guys, uh, in regards to the audience, what have you seen the, that the were coming from? Maybe fans and uh, being independent creators, Why like. Was the benefit of being? Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, I think for for me, I'm not sure about about. Uh, I don't want to speak for them, but for me, uh, I keep coming back to it because I enjoy doing it. And I always said that uh, I feel like I have a chance to make something that I've been waiting myself to see. Uh, I've been kind of tired of the new age horror films that have been coming out, and I've I've been waiting waiting around for. Uh, certain movies to come out and them to make certain movies and it never happens and I'm always always kind of disappointed and so uh, when I decided to make my first film it, it was I never intended on making a second one but I, I just I enjoyed it so much and I learned so much along the way that I wanted to continue doing it and that's when I started focusing on, on movies that I actually you know well what would I want to see what are people not uh doing that I would actually want to watch. And I think as far as the, uh, the people who are crowdfunding us, the lure is, uh, that you don't have big studios messing up a script because they want to appease the audience. You don't have big studios taking black Christmas and making it, uh, from R rated to PG 13, just because they want more audience to go to theaters and seeing it. Uh, and could you, all, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but, yeah. um, could the allure on the fan aspect, the the chance of, I know I can't speak for you guys in regards to what you did for crowdfunding, but the, a chance to own maybe a 
a poster or a a prop or uh, maybe a credit in the movie in a way. Yeah, uh, that that is that is another one. We in order to in, in order to sex, successfully be crowdfunded, we actually had to come up with some really creative perks, and these are things that people would not get if it wasn't for crowdfunding. We actually had uh, you could have a character named after you. You could have your your picture featured in the film. You could actually die in the film. You know, we had all these as perks because you know at the end of the day, you gotta do what you gotta do to make the money. Uh, on your end, has there been uh, with the aspect of crowdfunding? Has there been any type of issues with with it that you've had? Meaning, has there been one particular perk? Um, that you didn't expect to blow up, but it blew up uh, in a way? Um, <laughs> parts in the movie. Just, uh, yeah, they, everyone uh, everyone kept wanting, they really liked uh, the having a part in the movie. And, you know, we could have, if we could have kept uh, pushing them out, then we could have made uh, quite a bit more money. But the thing is, at a certain point, it's a, it's a, uh, problem with the script where you can't really fit anyone else in without just you know throwing in a bunch of random deaths or a bunch of random people and you probably would lose sight of what the movie is all about i i understand yeah. um it to kind of go back yes uh, um one thing i've said to my listeners one thing i'm not afraid to do is let the folks I'm interviewing, especially when I'm doing independent creators, is to uh, let them know what I think about uh, what they've done. And prior to folks at home, I've done. You all know this if you listened before. I did it with John Johnson and Darkstone, and I'm going to be doing it with Dave and his crew. Um, prior to uh, this recording and part of my research, I did watch uh, Curse of. Bloody Nurse, I think it was, on Amazon Prime. I did rent it. Uh, <laughs> um, can you... Yeah, oh, don't, I hear the cringe. <laughs> uh, like, oh no, he watched it. Um, the, <laughs> yes, I watched this film. Yes, uh, it's... Sorry. Why are you apologizing? Why are you apologizing? Um, uh, it's, that, kind of look, it's kind of like looking back at a yearbook photo in <laughs> hospital and you it, got that kind of really stupid hairdo and you know um, yes uh, uh, what uh, I can ask what did you first of all for a moment, what did you learn from making this particular film everything uh, when I started out doing uh, doing curse it was basically, uh, I'd seen so many, uh, like, sci-fi movies, and I've seen, had seen so many Amazon Prime movies, where they're these just, they're terrible, they're bad acting, everything's terrible in the film, and you look at it, and they got this, because they got, like, a couple million dollar budget, or, um, or even, sometimes even more, and you wonder, like, how do you have that, and it, it turned out this bad? And so kind of like the, the whole start of it was, I'm pretty sure that I could make a horror movie with practically no budget, and it wouldn't be the worst movie you've ever seen. And now, I, still, I still stick by that. I don't think it's the worst movie anyone's ever seen. Um, so. I, I, trust me, I, I've seen worse. I, I, I enjoy independent films because they offer up uh, something that, Sometimes the big creators don't do. Uh, I'm going to have to give you guys credit. There were a few things that I was like, well, I know it's going to make me sound like a little bit of a sicko and everything else. It's just that when I see a horror flick and there's a kind of a, in a way, a beheading, there's no, like, wait a minute, where's the blood pressure? You just decapita decapitated somebody. And this, you had a throat slitting scene and there was, in essence, blood pressure in a way. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's kind of ref refreshing to see that the filmmaker, you guys, thought of at least that. And a lot of the other things that I did see in the film would be, or the issues were just primarily nitpicks. 
Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say it like that. It was an enjoyable film. It, it does make me want to kind of see the second film that you... You all oh, made. You should. I yeah. promise. Yeah, the second one is a lot uh, better. There was a major bump up in everything. The budget was better. We got and a you great You want to talk some good practical effects? Watch number two. Now, uh, speaking of the second one, uh, Dave, you said uh, I remember seeing online you had some issues with Amazon not allowing it online. Yeah. Um, do you care to go? I'll ask it like this: Do you care to go into that, or if not, yeah. I'll leave it be. No, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, 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 I hadn't ran into this when I when I put uh, Curse on uh, on Amazon. You know, it had nudity and it had gore. Uh, it didn't have a lot of nudity, but you know, it had nudity. It had gore. It had a torture scene in it, um, and it was put on Amazon Prime just fine. And so I had never even thought about there being a problem with this one. And I actually had cut out multiple deaths and two nude scenes in this edit versus what I have on the uh, on the standard theatrical version, just to cut it down because the the second one was over two hours long. So when I went to put it on Amazon, I cut it down to an hour and a half or an hour and thirty seven minutes. So I'd already cut out two two different nude scenes. I had already cut out like a bunch of different deaths, and so I thought everything was going to be fine. And I submitted it. And they came back with a message and basically said it was too graphic in nature and there was uh, too much nudity that it, they would put it on Amazon Video, but there was no way that they were going to let me put it on Amazon Prime. Now, um, I'm, were you familiar with what happened earlier this year in Amazon? Uh, were you talking about the other movie that had that happen? Not so much other movie, but earlier this year, oh yeah, there, there was a bunch of titles. Right. Um, do you think that they, uh, from my research, it seemed like it was a lot of smaller creators like yourselves or like yourself that were seemingly targeted by Amazon, saying, you know, we don't want this, we don't want this, and they it's, were giving various entirely, reasons. Yeah, it's entirely possible uh, because. So many other people who had seen the film. I mean, there is a lot of, of nudity. There is a lot of gory. Gore. You know, I, I like to make sure people do know that. I mean, they they weren't lying when they said it was very graphic. It had a lot, lot of nudity. But th there's a lot of people who's like Hellraiser's on there. You know, and like mm -hmm. Fifty Shades of Grey's on there. You know, there's hostile. But you know, all these. Big budget movies, you know, I don't think they're any more graphic or, or you know, anything than our film is. Uh, the only thing that I know of about what back when they pulled, I know I was told even by the person who distributes uh, Curse Slash Nurse, he said that a bunch of his films actually got pulled off of Amazon. Uh, but, I mean, Curse is still on there, so I don't know. Well, I think, again, I think it's a lot of, I wouldn't say the bigger studios in a way. It's one, maybe the bigger studios have a lot of pull. Yeah. Uh, as per independent creators, I think there are a few, I wouldn't say bigger independent creators, but they have more of a catalog and view time. This is not not a dig against you, but... Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I totally understand. The, they have this bigger thing. They say, oh, well, this creator has maybe... Uh, 10, 15 titles to their their catalog and maybe a bunch of shorts. Let's since they have more of a watch time, let's leave them be. But here's this independent, I want to say a startup or a person that's trying to make a name for themselves. Um, I don't mean that you guys are trying to be cocky or you're just trying to get st the ball rolling and s that they're going to be more picky towards someone like yourself instead of another independent creator like yourself that just happens to have a bigger catalog. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the same thing uh, anywhere. Uh, they have a rule in place so they can use it when they want to use it. Right. Um, but uh, I, I actually thought about, at one point, I was considering editing the movie down even more to see if it would get on prime. But then, I don't know if you saw anything about it. I posted about it. Uh, Right around that same time, Amazon released us uh, a letter to everyone, basically saying that they were cutting our pay for views down to practically nothing. It was like one one penny for every hundred minutes viewed, 
So, I mean, at that point, it, it wasn't even worth going through the trouble of editing return anymore because it is on Amazon video, so you can rent it for two bucks. But well, that's what I did. I rented it for two bucks. You're probably getting a penny. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but either way, you at least you got a view from it. You got me looking at it. And to kind of pull things back around again, uh, with Bloody Summer Camp, you managed to get, I, I don't want to say, um, as I was trying to uh, tell somebody at my 9 to 5 uh, the other day that even though they not, might not be big names in major circles like Keanu Reeves or uh, so forth and so on, but in indie circuits and smaller movie time, uh, movie cir circles, they are big names. You managed to get Felissa Rose, yeah. part of Bloody Summer Camp. Um, can you tell us uh, about how you managed to score Felicia, uh, Felissa? And ha ha go into a little bit, because that must have been exciting for you to get her. Yeah, uh, well, when, when we first started wanting to crowdfund the movie... One of the things that we promised that we would crowdfund for was a horror celebrity. And right around the time that we, we started to look like it was it was going to be possible that we were going to be able to make it work, uh, Felissa was always my first choice because of us doing a camp slasher. I felt like she was probably the most iconic camp slasher that you could get from the 80s. And so I'd actually uh, looked her up and I actually... Uh, uh, wrote her through her uh, her contact uh, information on her website, and a couple months passed, and I hadn't heard anything. And I kind of, I kind of had, had started to look at other people. I, I looked into a couple other uh, actors and talked to a couple of them as well. But uh, then Felissa Rose actually uh, she hit me up right around the time that our crowdfunder was ending. And she said, basically, someone else runs her site for her. And she said, sometimes it's not a very timely thing, but, you know, they do check all their emails. And uh, she wrote me and she said that she she loved the idea. Uh, she asked for a, uh, you know, she asked for, like, the outline of it. And I told her what, what we had in mind for the character. And she absolutely loved it, said she wanted to be a part of it. And, and we got the ball rolling. That's good. That's cool. That's good to hear. I'm sure it'll make a great kind of an Easter egg for a lot of the fans to know and see in the film when it finally gets uh, put together and out there. I know you said you have a second round of crowdfunding coming in the next month or two in regards to uh, Bloody Summer Camp. Yeah, uh, is we, we just released the date uh, the other day, uh, January 21st. And uh, we'll be going back to filming in March. We had to kind of, yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh, uh, you just went quiet for a moment. That's all. Oh, oh, it must have cut out. But yeah, uh, we're going to be doing it on, in January 21st because we're actually going to start filming again in March when the weather gets uh, nice again. And okay. Uh, I just want to, I know, is Mike and the missus still there? Yes. Okay. Um, Mike, can you tell us? Uh, uh, I want to get them involved in this as well. Uh, yeah, I don't I'll, mean I'll to be. Step out right quick, so go ahead and talk to them. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm sorry. What was that again? Mike, uh, can you tell us about uh, being an actor in the in indie circuit and um, what you, how you feel about being this type of um, actor in a way? Oh, honestly, uh, I don't think I could find myself doing anything besides horror. Um, I was just raised on horror. I absolutely adore horror. Um, when I heard of, I mean, I'm actually one of those clear cut cases, actually, of I was one of the people who did the GoFundMe to be a part of Play Summer Camp in the beginning. And uh, it was one of the best moves I could have uh, made for myself. I got to meet uh, Dave and Amber, who are fantastic. The rest of the cast is beyond amazing. Uh, Felissa, oh. There is not enough things in the world I can say uh, about her and how wonderful she is. Uh, just such a sweetheart, so professional. I actually was her personal chauffeur to and from set while we were shooting, and honestly, she, her, and I would just have some of the most fun conversations on the on the drive. Uh, such a joy. 
Uh, being on the circuit, it's great. I've been meeting a lot of great new people, and uh, I got this great opportunity. And because of it, now um, I'm hoping to do future projects now with uh, Dave and Amber as well. And they've uh, brought me into the fold with all their friends and all the other people. Uh, Owen, our, photo- our, our, our master of photography, uh, he is absolutely amazing. Um, and like I said, I mean, my social circle has grown rapidly. I've been meeting so many great people along the way. <laughs> How did you get started in uh, acting, and what other ro- have you done other roles uh, in the past? Uh, as far as movies, uh, no, this is actually my first uh, movie, movie role. Um, I have uh, I, I did you know, a lot of theater in high school and college, um, uh, but that was about it. Uh, and just uh, I really wanted to do this, and uh, and funny enough, I was watching Curse one night with my next door neighbor, and I was like, "Hey, uh, this is actually not a bad movie." Actually, it was like, you know, it, it has its flaws, but man. That, that that script is absolutely wonderful. It's like, that is so hysterical. There are so many fun moments in this. I'm, I'm a fan. And then sure, my neighbor goes, oh, I know that guy. Like, what do you mean you know that guy? He goes, yeah, he's a friend of mine. You want me to introduce him? I think he's doing a sequel. Maybe he can get you in there. And uh, sure enough, I, I, I hit him up the very next day. And they're like, ah, sorry. Uh, we just wrapped up Return. But, hey, you know, we would definitely be interested in talking to you when we do our next project. And sure enough, they were in touch with me. They, they said, hey, you know, if you want, you know, you can, uh, we, you can audition. Or if you want to get a shoe in on this, you know, you can go check our, our, our go, GoFundMe. I went and I was like, ooh, well, I could be guaranteed to go play next to Felissa. Oh, I, I, I got to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm a big uh, Superway Camp fan. I love the Hatchet series, and she was in the fourth one, Victor Crawley. Uh, my she wife was in Hatchet? Oh, I didn't know, see, she, I she didn't see anything one. about it in her IMDb. I got to go back and check. Oh, yeah, she was in the fourth one called uh, Victor Crawley. Oh, the fourth one. I haven't seen that one yet. It's, it's actually pretty good, I have to admit. Uh, you know, It's like a new chapter in, in the story, but they do a good job, I have to admit. I, I did like the – I liked Hatchet 2 and 3. I thought the third one was, was kind of hysterical in a way. But, oh, yeah. Uh, because it has a lot of funny moments in, in it. I don't <laughs> – again, I'm sounding like a sicko because I'm, I enjoy horror – horror films but still uh sometimes a horror movie can be kind of funny uh, and amber are you there i'm here okay uh how'd you get started in uh special effects were you or were you just drafted well, <laughs> i don't mean um, that in a bad way no um so i dabble in makeup a lot anyway but when we did um curse and return um I stepped in and started helping out. Uh, we had Kia Reigns on Curse and then on Return of the Slash Nurse, it was me and Kia. And then we kind of just go from there. And then on Bloody Summer Camp, I'm lead on special effects. So I like blood and gore and I like to figure out ways to do that. So so you, what have you in, learned in regards to uh, getting your hands dirty in a way in special effects? Uh, there's a lot of a lot of work in it <laughs> there's a lot of work in it and um it's definitely a lot of technical things that go into it is there anything that you um made your own in a way or f- tried to do and found out later that there was an easier way to do it oh of course <laughs> <laughs> Every damn thing I do. <laughs> well i mean I think it's always in in the moment you try to overcomplicate something and then afterwards you're like, man, I should have just done it this way and it probably would have worked a lot better. But it's it's a learning effect no matter what you're doing. So, so I'm, I'm glad to, that you're enjoying yourself with it. Well, as many might say, there should be – some might say there should be more f- women doing stuff like this. But uh, I'm happy that you're doing this and that you are learning something new and – how do I put this properly? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm grateful that you are part of uh, making movies and contributing to everything else. And same thing with Mike. Uh, I won't say I have. Dave, are you, are you still there, or did he wander yeah. off? Oh, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dave, what have you learned in regards to um, over the past few years making, making movies? Well, the the first film I went into, it was the whole thing was a crash course. And uh, I basically had to look up everything. I had to look up, uh, you know, how do you do night scenes? You know, I, I had to, even though I had someone doing effects, I still, you know, I still had to make props. I still had to, 
you know, uh, do camera work. I, I tried a lot. One one of the biggest things I hated about the first film was I couldn't find a cinematographer that was willing to work with me because I, you know, it was my first film. So I actually did the camera work, and like I said, it was a crash course on on working a camera. And I, that's why I hate the way the film is shot. And uh, but through all of that, through all of the, I dealt with uh, cast members dropping out. I dealt with people not showing up the day of, and through all of the stuff that went wrong in the first one, I learned how to do how to work around it, how to do it right. Now I learned, okay, well I should have did this, should have did that. And so when I went and did the second film. My, the whole reason I wanted to do the second film was because I wanted to take what I learned and try to make a better film from that. And uh, we got a cinematographer, uh, the second film, and like I said, I, I, whenever cast members didn't show up or something, I was all, I've all, always been prepared. So, you know, but, uh, everything, everything that I know now, I learned through the process of making the first two films. So was there a point that when you look back and said... All right. At this point, I started with this. Now you have, I have, I started with X. Now I have Z in a way. I mean, have you upgraded certain things in regards to when you started? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everything's been upgraded. Uh, uh, as far as far as like the equipment and uh, even 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 the actors. I know that's probably not part of the part of the question but you know the first film we used uh i used basically anyone that i could find by the third film i'm actually doing casting i'm actually you know getting people who have who have been you know had acting lessons have been in other films and uh and everything from every time i upgrade do another movie i want to upgrade something we we get more body mics you know we get better cameras you know every time we're like how can we upgrade the equipment to make it better for the viewer. From the other side of the uh, table, so to speak, uh, I, I can understand where you com- you're coming from in a way. Um, uh-huh. The f- fans of the show know that uh, last year, or I say earlier this year, I, but I filmed it last year, um, I was part of an indie film myself. And and so behind the scenes, in a way, so I can understand what you're going through. Uh, I was pretty much my experience working behind the scenes. I was grafted into a role, if you want to um, say it that way. Uh, pretty much, it was going to be I was going to be extra number five, if you want to say that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Meaning that it was going to be like, okay, y'all could fight over which number extra you're going to be. And out of maybe about a dozen people that were going to show up, three people showed up for the acting that day. And the person that was putting everything together said, okay, we there are going to be three roles. You three are now acting. I'm like, uh, you do realize I have no acting experience <laughs> whatsoever. And he was like, "No problem. It's just going to be a few pages." I'm like, "Okay, I'll I'll wing it." And I'll put it like this: I, like I said, I was drafted into the role. It was pretty much, we can't pay you, but you'll get an IMDb credit. I'm like, "Works for me." <laughs> um, so, and, and it's just like, I get to be that person that goes, "I'm in the movie, but your acting sucks." I don't care. <laughs> Acting. Uh, but still, uh, it was a fun experience doing it. And yeah, and that 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 you just described, that is, that is like a normal day on an independent film. People willing to show up? Okay, well, then we're doing this, and let's keep rolling. You know, you just got to work with what you got. And it, like I said, for me, it was just a, a fun experience. I, I personally didn't care how bad my acting was and yes folks i am using air quotes for an audio podcast so uh (laughs) uh, it is what it is and yes it was very i did enjoy myself and it just to this day it weirds me out that i'm part of something that's kind of big and that i have this like offbeat credit to my name on imdb and it's just like (laughs) 
really, I, it's like, just look at it. It's like, I have this part of my, like, how many people, I don't brag about it, but it's like, how many people out there have, granted, many people have an, uh, uh, an acting credit, but still, it's like, there's 350, maybe a million people in the United States, but it's like, I got an acting credit. <laughs> uh, you could say that to your, about yourself, um, Dave. It's like, wait a minute, not many people have a writing, producing, and, you know, directing credit. I do. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, and that's, that's the thing about it. You don't, uh, I don't think most people who are doing the kind of indie films that we do, you don't do it. Uh, if it feels like work because you put too much into it uh, that, and you're still doing like, I'm still maintaining a 40 hour a week job. You know, we're doing this. I, I'm working with people. We're doing it on weekends and days off and you don't do it because, you know, because it pays well, you do it because of what you're talking about, because you had fun doing it. You enjoy doing it. And one of the cool things about being, uh, in film is when you can do stuff like like what happened with you where you get you actually get to see how much like people appreciate when you let them be a part of something because you know to you you're uh, to me I'm just like well I need someone to fill a role and you ask someone else and they're like really you want me to do it and you know it, it makes their day makes their week you know that they gotta got to be a part of something that you know that you that you're creating. So, uh, to me, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the benefits. That's, that's one of the good things about independent filmmaking. And I'm sure, um, Mike, you there? Oh, I sure am. I'm sure you, you'll be able to tell your kids dad was in your, uh, or your grandkids, your grandpa was in a movie many years ago. Want to see? <laughs> um, so it, it's that I'm sure you got that same type of kick and I'm sure there'll be a part, Later on, uh, a few weeks that I'm sure was one of the Dave was one of the perks that you get a signed DVD or something like that. Yeah. yeah so I, I'm sure that was kind of odd for you guys to like. Wait a minute, I'm actually signing this for a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I actually had it, or someone actually approached me already, asked me for an autograph. I was like, hey, I heard you're gonna be in a new camp selection. I was like, yeah. Like, well, can I get your autograph? Like. You know I'm nobody, right? <laughs> they didn't care. They wanted it. <laughs> and I bet you were thinking, I thought I'll never see the day when I'm doing this. Oh, my wife even saw the big glee and, and grin on my face. She's like, oh, boy, it's going to take a month for this guy's ego to come down now. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have a few copies of, uh, of the movie that I'm part of that are still floating around that they know that I'm in it and I'm sure I'll be approached at some point saying, yeah, you're going to have to sign this now. So there's that aspect. I'm, I'm sure. Um, will you guys be doing the circuit at any point? Yeah, Dave? Well, we're actually going to be at uh, pop rock and horror new year's Eve in Pennsylvania. Uh, on the 30th of this month. And, um, I know. Uh, I was about to say uh, horrifying, horrifying, but uh, Monster Mania it will be. I'm sure coming up. They do that twice a year. That might be beneficial for you guys. Beneficial for you guys too. Yeah, we we've got a couple lined up. Uh, we haven't done anything for Monster Mania yet, but we we're trying. We're currently trying to figure out what what conventions that we want to you know try to be 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 at. So it's, it's a very good possibility that. that yeah, you know, that we could end up at that. Um, Dave, uh, besides uh, finishing up uh, Bloody Camp uh, next year, in regards to filming and putting everything together, are there anything else that might be in the works that you are willing to tell everybody? Ah, uh, dun dun dun. dun. Uh, we we have an idea that that's been floating around a, a, a script that started to be written about a different uh, film. Uh, we are, we're kind of hopeful that if we can wrap up bloody summer camp in time, uh, we could get a crowdfunder going by the summer and possibly start filming in the fall. It's, uh, it's a, it's a different kind of take. It's a more modern style, uh, horror film, but, 
yeah, so we're already thinking about the next project. So, um, can you, in your experience, I'm, I'm sure we probably just covered this, but can you tell me the experience, um, the pro, I should say more so the process you take in putting together a film and, um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah, usually like, obviously, uh, yeah, I, I write all, all my films. So yeah, as, as at least up to this point. And usually it comes up with the I come up with an idea for a script, and I come up with several different ideas, and I'll bounce them around. First off, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a couple people that I'm close to get their opinions on it, and yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go through the the thought process in my head. Of course, with an indie film, it has to be something that we could actually film with a with a low budget so everything everything from costumes to locations has to be has to be considered and so i'll bounce around a, a three or four different script ideas before i kind of fall on one that that i really start pursuing and then i'll start uh, amber and my cinematographer owen uh they're usually the two that i kind of uh stick with the entire way uh, until the script is done, and then once the script is done, then I start talking to uh, some of the returning cast members that I use a lot. I have a couple people that that I like to use in every film just because they're reliable. They're I believe they're good, uh, and I think they're entertaining. And so you know we'll get together, and then they'll help me make a pitch trailer, and then we'll start building the crowdfunder. And and if we're you know it depends on whether or not we need to do an all or nothing crowdfunder or a flexible one. But, um, uh, I'll, I'll put this in now here before we get into a little bit of fun uh, stuff, but this is for kind of maybe geared to you, Dave and Amber, uh, Mike, if you want to chime in, you could do so, but what advice do you have to give to others out there, both young and old that might want to uh, get into making movies themselves a uh, couple couple things that i can give advice to that i probably should have taken myself one uh make a lot of connections first when i when i first uh did curse i had like 200 people on facebook i didn't know anyone who who had anything to do with any kind of local cinema and so that's why i couldn't find anyone interested Part two was a complete night and day because I had gained interest in other people and I had found connections. But connections goes a long way to finding people willing to help you make your film because you can't do it by yourself. And secondly, what I should have done, what everyone tells you to do and I ignored is maybe start with a short film. That way you see everything you're going to have to deal with before taking on the entire thing i i did it but the the short film might have prepared me a little bit more for the for the whole experience amber uh take risks and if your first film doesn't turn out the way that you you know had imagined or hoped for don't feel down about it just continue on because it's it's all a learning process and eventually you'll get to where you want to be Best piece of advice I can give, um, just from my own personal retrospect, never, ever turn away a horror movie, uh, 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 ever. If you ever have a chance to be in one, take it. Even, even to this day and age, almost every of your favorite actors all probably started in somewhere in horror. Jennifer Aniston, Leprechaun, Johnny Depp, Nightmare on Elm Street, Kevin Bacon, Friday the 13th, George Clooney, Return of the Killer Tomatoes. I mean, not, not, not even the original, the, the sequel. <laughs> I mean, you just never know. The only thing I do know is that horror is fun. The people you meet are great, and you just never know. You could be in that movie that becomes that next cult classic, and everyone will know who you are. And it's just one of those fun ones. That it's a fun risk to take, and and like and the gain, it could be big. The loss is very little to nothing to worry about. I'm going to add this to uh, folks out there that might be listening. Uh, I'm going to add this to Mike's statement. Do it. Take that risk that you're comfortable with. Uh I'm saying that uh, for everybody because there could be a few people. I'm not saying Dave or anything like that is 
uh, part of it, but there are a few people out there that try to put people in very uncomfortable positions. So please, uh, if you're not comfortable with doing something, you have that ability to say no and walk away. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, nudity is a big thing. If uh, if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. If you have any 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 doubts, don't do it. Because if you if you're if there's any chance you're going to regret it, it's not worth doing. And that's why I've always, you know, tried to make sure that anyone who's willing to do nudity, makes sure that they understand what they're getting into because you can't take it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I keep hearing from a lot of folks. We've had a lot of. Uh, uh, female actors that have stated in their interviews yet yeah, if you don't want to do it stand you know stand up for your values and don't do it unless you're comfortable doing it and if they insist walk you have that right to walk away oh, yeah. so I, um, I would i would never force someone to do it for the sole fact that i wouldn't want them fighting me not putting the movie out you know right. or or trying to get it taken back. I want so, I want someone who's always going to support the film. That I, I'm not saying you it. do that. I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I completely understand. So, um, to kind of break away into something a little bit more fun, what kind of movies do you guys tend to enjoy? Or, other, I'm sure a horror movie has some horror movies have some place in that fandom. But there's there anything other than horror movies that you tend to enjoy or? Um, like in any way uh, I'm, I'm big into comedy as well that's why i kind of like my favorite genre is a mixture like uh you know the the 80s campy movies I, I get a huge kick out of those movies because uh i like horror and i like laughing so and they're my two comedy and horror are my two favorite genres so movies that mix them together uh tend to be my favorite favorite style I tend to mix up with a little bit of everything. Um, I love my cartoons. Like I'm, I'm a mad uh, running on my Disney Plus right now, watching my DuckTales and my Avengers uh, cartoons. Uh, I love comic book movies. I love mafia movies. Uh, just watched The Irishman on Netflix. Excellent movie. Highly recommend that one. Um, uh, let's see. I love comedies. Uh, just like the next person. I mean, who doesn't like to laugh? I mean, you know, yeah. everyone likes to laugh. Um <laughs> Um, and like I, I, I like sci-fi and adventures as well. Um, like, you know the fantasies, like Lord of the Rings, the Harry Potters. You know, pretty much. I'm open to all uh, all, all, all cinema, pretty much. I love horror. <laughs> Mostly like, that's all I watch. But then, like, I do, I do watch old movies too. I like old movies. You know? Is it the uh, Amber? Is it the '80s cheese that you enjoy, or anything more more modern? I don't. I'm not much of a modern person. I like the older horror movies. The some um, of the eighties cheese, like Hel I wouldn't say uh, Hellraiser is eighties cheese, but there's a lot of great eighties uh, cheese horror that is out there, as well as eighties cheese sci-fi and everything else. Yeah, well, I mean, I like like Evil Dead is one of my favorite movies, right? And then you've got like Slumber Party Massacre, and you know, <laughs> old like weird horror movies i like all that stuff and just old school movies in general too like mm -hmm. breakfast at tiffany's things like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was again having a same gentleman i was having a conversation at my nine to five that it was the other day and we were just talking about movies in regards to like 80s cheese uh especially some of the horror movies like maybe food of the gods or alligator that came out and, <laughs> yeah it's like why did they make food of the gods because what's it about well animals eat you know giant this strange ooze comes out of the ground they eat it and it turns rabbits into cannibalistic giants why because <laughs> cuz and why are we watching it cuz <laughs> yeah i think in the 80s they were really just there was no wrong answer for a movie it was yeah. it was like oh i got a new ideas like okay well let's go for it let's do go that. for it let's do it and it, it was just plain <laughs> fun uh, that's why we got chud we got chud too yeah. bud the chud the stuff the stuff oh 
Why the stuff? Spiders? <laughs> no one really knows. It's there. <laughs> I was trying to... Uh, the, the gentleman I was talking to at work, he's like maybe in his 20s. And I'm like, I'm trying to tell him about Q the Winged Beast. And he's like, what's that movie about? A dino- winged dinosaur that runs havoc in New York. And it stars <laughs> David Carradine. Watch it. <laughs> Why? Cuz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, are there the bad? Thing about a movie is that it doesn't really have to have a plausibility. It's just something fun to watch. Yeah. It, it's there. I, I'll, I think a lot of us grew up watching it, and it, it just it happened. I think a lot of us it just was just it, it for someone like myself who I've told people I'm not a '70s child. I'm an '80s child. Born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s. And the 80s was almost the golden age for that horror stuff. And it hit me right at that ripe spot of puberty, (laughs) if you catch my drift. (laughs) So uh, nowadays, it's just all about the jump scare. And it's not about... When I look at the horror... Some of the horror movies today are good, but a lot of the stuff that is reminds me of almost that nostalgia is what... Uh, guys and gals like yourselves are putting out on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis is that it almost reminds a lot of the folks that this is what made horror horror and this is what a lot of folks enjoyed. Um, do you do you guys and gals feel that way as well? Yeah, yes. and, oh, absolutely. And you got you to gotta really, uh, that's one big reason that you got to love crowdfunders because uh, so many of these movies uh, wouldn't exist without it, and now it's like if you're unsatisfied with the stuff that these big studios are putting out, well, you can explore the the lower low budget indie films. You can explore what someone in Utah is making, you know, off a of crowdfunder. You know, maybe his idea, you know, isn't on a big screen, but you know, you might actually enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. Right, you have more selection now because of that. And I, I think you guys might. You, I, I'm lumping you, Dave, into, and your crew into a wider, um, or putting you on a very large envelope. That it, in a way, even though crowdfunding is helping you, and maybe Amazon Prime is helping getting someone like yourself out there to more people. But I think there is still that. Uh, hustle to be made to get your work out there to even more of an audience because it, even though we have the internet it's still probably a tough time for someone like yourself to get the word about your movies out to a wider audience yes oh absolutely yeah uh, I think as far as with uh, with me as far as indie filmmaking I think uh Promoting is definitely still the biggest uh, the biggest hurdle. Shit, even even uh, big time studios are still. Dave, you, you exact, Dave, exactly you, use social media. Uh, Dave, uh, I, yeah. uh, you might have to backtrack for a moment. Uh, I think Skype just decided to not oh. relay uh, about two seconds of your conver- your answer. So, yeah, I was I was just saying that even even uh, big studios are still trying to figure out how exactly to market, you know, their films to people. So obviously, you know, little indie filmmakers like us, you know, that's, that's the biggest hurdle is trying to figure out how, how do you reach these people? How do you get more people to know about your film? Cause making it is great, but if, if no one knows about it to watch it, then, you know, you're screwed. And with uh, social media, like Twitter, uh, Facebook and YouTube kind of, uh, moving the goalposts, I'm sure it's making things a lot harder for you to do that as well. I know it's hard for on our end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as as more people get on, as as they get bigger, the it's just like Amazon. They're all doing it. They're all kind of. It used to be a platform that was great for uh, people starting out. Now it's over overrun by people who are already out there. And the little guy is starting to be ignored again. Yeah, that that is sad. You see that? I at least I see it with YouTube. You're probably seeing it with Amazon. It's a, it's that again. It started out as you said, 
all for the little guy. Everybody started looking at the little guy, and all of a sudden, when YouTube got big, they decided, heck with the little guy, we want... I'm not knocking the people. Uh, we want the Will Smiths. We want the Danny Trejos. We want the Samuel Jacksons. We want, you know, the uh, the big name people on our site. Heck with the you know the independent creators. We want the CNNs, the Foxes, the ABCs part of our site, not the little guy. And they're kind of trying to push the little guy out of the way. Yeah. And it's very sad. Yeah, and like I said, that's why that's why promoting is always going to be a pain because you're always trying to find that one way to you know to to get your stuff out there. And if I may ask, if I may ask, what what has your, your I know Dave, you have your your wife working with you, but how has the kind of the extended family and friends look at uh, you as a filmmaker? in a way again you don't have to answer if you don't want to oh yeah now i don't have any problem with it uh my my family i mean they're pretty they're pretty i I guess the word would be impressed you know they're they're proud of 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 the movies that i put out they're amazed that that i went from being uh someone who was into music to just you know one day i said i'm making a film and i don't think even any of them believed that i was going to make it so now that I am putting movies out, and you know, I think they're proud of it. My friends still kind of nothing's really changed on that end. Aside, from, yeah, I've made new friends through filmmaking, but all my old friends, you know, I'm in I'm in a band, and you know, they kind of they kind of make jokes about it, but it, it's still kind of like I'm no different than I was before I was making films. You're still Dave, the whomever you know, as you, according to your friends, right? Yeah, uh, you know. Oh, Dave's big filmmaker now, ain't he? I, I mean that in jest, but you know. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it is. You know, it's just like I mean, they're impressed. They're you know, but at the same time, it doesn't change. It hasn't changed how they how they looked at me. So, at um, being that filmmaker, have you has your viewpoint on films changed in regards to now that you make mi- movies? Yeah, it's uh, first off, I can I'm way more appreciative of a lot of films because I know what went into making them, you know, and at the same time, I'm I'm also curious at certain things. When I watch, I pay attention to things that I didn't pay attention to before. And, uh, you know, sometimes I, 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 I get curious about how they did something or, you know, what they, what they had to do to make it happen or why they chose to do that. So, it's a it's a whole another way of looking at at filmmaking after you've been behind the camera. That's always uh, that's always good to know. I'm, I'm trying to think a little bit. What else can we include in this to help? Um, I know one thing. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, I'll include the links. Is there any particular links that you wish to tell folks uh, about in regards to finding? Uh, you or anything I, I may I state this if you don't want private stuff out there please do not rely on any private information yeah uh, well we one thing we just got done is we have uh, we just got slasher 15.com going which is that's uh, the the filmmaking uh, name behind the movies that I make so if you go to slasher 15.com you'll You'll see the uh, the date for our crowdfunder, and once that gets going, there'll be a link for the crowdfunder, as well as there's trailers for, for my previous films, and there'll be updates about appearances, what conventions we're going to be at. and So that's definitely one to check out and one to keep updated on because we're going to be updating it uh, pretty regularly. And then we're on all social media. We're on Facebook at... Uh, bloody summer camp we're on uh twitter at bloody camp instagram i'm sorry we're on facebook at bloody camp twitter on bloody camp and uh instagram is bloody summer camp and i'll i'll include the uh links in our show description down below so uh folks if you're going to our website you'll be able to click those links and go directly there as well um 
I think that's about it. Is there anything else you guys would like to include or talk about? Uh, I'm completely open about it. Um, no, just, uh, like I said, just, uh, if, if you're interested in, in the crowd funder, like I said, it comes out on 21st of January and, uh, both of our slash nurse films are on Amazon. It's just like I said, one of them you have to pay $2 for, but check them out if you're interested. So I'll, I'll see if I could get the, at least the Amazon link to one of them. And I'll put that in the show notes too, just in case our listeners would like to check out the movies so um or at least stream them online if you have uh amazon prime or amazon and you wish to check them out please do check them out uh i think that is it for this episode and i'm going to welcome back everyone again i hope you enjoyed that interview yes there are a few times that i sounded kind of weird and uh awkward in regards to it it's just that i'm a big fan of horror movies and independent horror movies so Therefore, there's times that I look at and it's like, when I compare it, yeah, I'm going to notice things and point them out. So, and as I said, I'm not afraid of reviewing, watching a movie of somebody's and reviewing it right in front of them, in essence, and telling them what I think. And I'm not afraid of that. I'm, I'm going to step up and tell people what I think about their product as much as I, what I love, what I hate, and everything else. So if you want to join in the conversation, you're more than happy to do so. Once again, our email is uh, longcoatmafia at gmail.com. Uh, you can leave it if you're, in essence, quote unquote, listening to this on YouTube. Just leave a comment. If you want, leave a comment down below. Uh, and we'll, we'll see it. We'll respond to it. Or we'll read that comment on a uh, up and coming episode of the Long Coat Mafia podcast. So, uh, but we'll get to our YouTube channel in a moment. But if you could also, you may also. Uh, sorry, I want to get all this out and get this. Oh, I want to say this episode done with. But uh, I know it's coming out in a bad way. But. If you want to, you could also, if you're on our Facebook page, our Facebook page is, for those of you who are not sure and can't really click the links in the description, our our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash The Long Coat Mafia Podcast. Uh, just do a search on, the, if you're on your mobile device, do a search for The Long Coat Mafia Podcast. Our page is the first one that comes up. Yes, we do have a Facebook group that only has two members part of it right now so if you want to join that you're you're more than welcome to do so and start up that community and talk to us and so forth and so on but uh you're more than welcome to join our page with the other uh folks we are currently at 199 people who clicked that like button uh who's going to be that 200 200th person to click that like button even though we have over 200 people following us on Facebook, we have uh, only about 199 people who have clicked that like button. So please click that like button. Uh, that way you could see up uh, our kind of running commentary, which we should start getting back into as the new year rolls into things. Because uh, a lot of times, uh, me and a lot of the folks that are quote a lot of the quote unquote folks behind the scenes tend to post to uh, our ch- our facebook page are kind of busy with the holiday season so it that kind of fell by the wayside a little bit i do apologize or i should say we do apologize especially with our twitter and everything else we're trying to kind of gear back up as things kind of relax behind the scenes that way we could focus more on the show and kind of get rejuvenated which we are already are so uh what else? Uh, we do have a Twitter account. Like we said, our Twitter is uh, Long Coat Mafia. So uh, while you're there, please click that follow button. Uh, I should say while you're also, while I'm saying that, while you're on our Facebook page, if you're there, please, again, click that like button. I know uh, Facebook doesn't like when we tell you to do things or suggest to you to click that like button and follow us on Facebook. But if you want to... F- if you don't want to do that, and Facebook is too much of a boomer thing for you, uh, head on to Twitter. 
follow us on Twitter. Uh, we should start to be more active on Twitter. Or if you kind of like Facebook but don't like Facebook, there's always Instagram. Our Instagram uh, handle is Long Coat Mafia. So while you're there, sorry, rented lips. Uh, again, I'm starting to get a cold again. Our Instagram handle is Long Coat Mafia. While you're there, please click that follow button. We tend to post up memes every now and again concerning the show and other things. And plus, we tend to post up photos of where we've been, events that we are at or taking par- part of, and so forth and so on. So you're more than welcome to follow us there if you so see fit. But if Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is not your thing, we are on YouTube. That's right, we are on YouTube. So if you want to, uh, you can either click the link in the description if you're able to do so, or just head on over to YouTube and hit that search bar and search up the Long Coat Mafia podcast. We are the only channel that comes up. And while you're there, not only can you listen to our shows on uh, on YouTube if and when Podbean decides to post them and YouTube decides to accept the shows. Uh, I say this because every now and again, YouTube doesn't post up or say uh, somewhere along the mix. Our shows do not get always posted up to YouTube. So uh, still, that's why we have uh, what's coming next in the tail end. But we, while on you, uh, YouTube, uh, I must let all of you know that uh, we don't post all our videos to YouTube because of uh, how YouTube tends to run things. And depending on when you listen to this, uh, YouTube may or may not be a thing because of COPPA. But that's beside the point. If you want to hear about COPPA and our thoughts on that, please, uh, if you our new listener, go back into our archives a little bit and hear about uh, uh, our thoughts on COPPA and how it might be affecting YouTube. So, still, uh, we do tend to put some of the longer format videos and YouTube exclusives on YouTube uh, when possible, but that's why we also ask and kind of push Facebook a little bit because sometimes YouTube doesn't like us posting videos on their channel due to the fact that there might be music playing in the background or uh, what have you uh, because YouTube likes the longer format stuff and Facebook likes the shorter format stuff. So there's sometimes we post some things on uh Facebook and some things on YouTube. So please uh, not just subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you like any of the videos there, hit that like button. If you want to comment on them, you're more than welcome to do so. But also uh, hit that follow button on or say that like button on Facebook. That way, if there is an exclusive video on either or, you're able to do that. Uh, At least catch that particular video. Because on us, as we continue, sometimes we stream on YouTube, sometimes we stream on Facebook, sometimes we stream on, or if we get a little bit of the energy going, we might stream on Mixer or Twitch. Our Mixer channel is mixer.com forward slash LCMP. Uh, those letters are capitalized, so uh, don't forget to kind of uh, watch, uh, book that. Uh, kind of subscribe to us there if they allow you to do that without a fee. Uh, as well as our Twitch uh, channel is twitch.tv forward slash Lone Coat Mafia Pod. Uh, j- stay tuned to a, kind of our other social media because we tend to post up if and when we're streaming to those sites. Uh, we do include a link to them. So as for finding our episodes, as we stated, you can just every now and again find a... T- certain percentage of our shows on YouTube, but if you're more on the go person, uh, I should say, if you prefer to listen to us on a desktop or laptop computer and not go to YouTube, you're more than happy to get our show via Stitch Radio, Spotify, iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, depending on what OS you're using, or going to our main website, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. It's all one word. I should say the Long Coat Mafia is all one 
one word and dot and podbean dot com uh all our back catalogs there uh links to where to find us on like itunes and spotify uh, i think spotify our spotify link is up there i'll have to check uh while our website you can find out about our regular hosts that have been on the show which i gotta add don ramirez to um but you can listen to our complete back catalog going all the way to the beginning see how rough and tumble we were and all the past interviews and so forth and so on. The reason why I kind of push our main website, which again is thelonecoatmafia.podbean.com, is because uh, sometimes iTunes tends to get a little finicky and not pick up new episodes on a lot of, even the mainstream podcasts. Uh, so uh, it's a way for you guys and gals who wish to listen to us to snag those episodes you could live stream those episodes or you could download them and listen to them at your leisure we have a lot of panel episodes up there and we have a uh, a lot of uh uh panels interviews hostfuls uh etc etc plus itunes and stitcher and google only go up to maybe about 90 uh, uh like if you want to include the past catalog, it only goes up to 90 episodes. But if you want to listen to the beginning, you have to go to all the way to the uh, to our website. So uh, there's that. But if you want to listen to on, us on the go on a mobile device, uh, we are available on Apple Podcasts, the Stitcher app, the Spotify app, Google Play Podcasts, plus the Podbean app. Uh, so if you pull up your uh, web browser on your mobile device and type in uh, thelonecoatmafia.podbean.com. It'll direct you to the Podbean app. So I also recommend the Podbean app just in case iTunes, Google, or Spotify tend to get a little bit finicky. That way you're able to get uh, the episode. And plus, uh, you're able to go all the way back to the beginning, I think. Plus, possibly leave a comment. It's free. So, uh, what else? Uh, that seems to be about it. Uh, if you have a laptop or desktop computer and not connected in it at home, we do recommend supporting your local library and uh, uh, getting uh, logging on to their computer lab and snagging our episodes there and bring them home to your laptop or desktop computer and listening to them at your leisure there if need be. So, uh, that's it. See you all next week. Uh, for a brand new episode what's going to happen i don't know uh maybe i'll get big uh because of our how our schedule is kind of being more relaxed and we might get big candy kind of in somehow whether through skype or uh it's too kind of too late to get them quote unquote in studio but uh we might get them in through skype if need be uh if he is willing uh to kind of do a kind of uh year in our review in review uh and so forth and so on also side note we did get a uh a brand new audio mixer in uh soundboard so to speak depending on your level of uh uh audio techno babble so to speak if you want to see our tale about that or hear about our tale in regards to getting our uh new mixer and some of our upgrades we got this holiday season please go to our youtube channel uh as always all our links to our social media and where to find our stuff is in the show description uh if they're not clinkable in your uh where you get it you can always go to our website again which is the lone coat mafia dot podbean dot com and again i'll see all of you next week i am out You've been listening to the Long Coat Mafia Podcast, the Internet's most hated and mafia-themed geek podcast. 